the question for you, and and you know, Sean, I walk in, I'm lucky and blessed enough to meet somebody like yourself who is knowledgeable, has 18 years in the game. One of the first things I should be discussing is my long-term real estate goals, correct? Is correct. that what I heard you say? Correct. Okay. Say my long-term real estate goals is to have multiple properties, rental incomes. Number one, should I put this in my name? Should I put them in, in an LLC? Like, what would you recommend to people who are like, okay, I know I have to live somewhere. So I'm going to start off with maybe uh, three family. Does mm-hmm. it go in Sean's name or does it go into my company? And looking forward, how should I set up my portfolio? It depends on your capital, right? So if you're a first-time home buyer and you have minimal capital, meaning money, right? You don't mm-hmm. have, you may have a couple thousand saved and you have enough to do your first deal. That's going to go in your personal name and that's going to be an FHA loan, right? You're going to live in one of the units and you'll buy the multifamily there. After that deal, if now you, you have some more money and now you want to continue to buy real estate, but you don't want it in your personal name. You have your LLC and you want to put in your LLC. You can do that also. It's just going to require a 25% down payment. And now you can put that property into your LLC and it won't touch your personal credit. Stop right? there for a second. So mm-hmm. if I want to buy a crib for rental income purposes only, it requires a higher down payment. Correct. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you have a higher down payment, which will be about 25% of the sales price. So if it's 100K sales price, 25000 right, for that property. And you can put that in your LLC. Now, when you put it in your LLC, it's not in your personal name at all. It's all in that business name. How the does business, that protect me? Well, why would I do it? You would do that because if someone wants to sue you, someone wants to, you know, someone trips and falls, something like that. They're not coming after, you know, Matt Garland personally. They're coming at 123 Main Street LLC. Are there any tax benefits for me for doing that? There are definitely tax benefits for doing that, but that's why I would tell you, you know, consult with a CPA um, for, for especially prior to you buying real estate because you want to know what the tax, tax benefits are if you are to buy a multifamily, a single family, if you are going to do construction, like how can you write all of this stuff off? So that's why I said earlier, CPA or tax professional is very important to have a part of your team. Okay, let's take it backwards for a second because I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's dumb it all the way down. Let's do it. I, I, I walk in. I know the property I want to buy. Match my loan officer. What documentation do I need? Oh, yeah. So documentation needed to get pre-approved, right? You need last two years of W-2s and tax returns. We need to see a two-year work history. Um, if you are self-employed, or you, you receive 1099 income. 1099 income is, let's say you're a real estate agent or you drive an Uber, right? Yep. You get paid 1099. That is considered self-employed in the lending world. So we would need to see your tax returns. We would need to see 30 days of pay stubs if you're a W-2 employee, copy of your ID, last two months of your bank statements. We need to see the money that you're going to use to purchase the home. Um, the money could be in a retirement account. Then we would need to see the retirement account. We can get a gift from a family member. Um, copy of ID. So those are the Stop initial documents. for a second. Talk about gifts? Let's talk about gifts. Because a lot of people don't have that down payment. They typically will get it from somebody who has it, lends it to them. Maybe it's a mom. It's a dad. Um, maybe it's a spouse. <clears throat> talk to me about the gifts. So gifts can come from a... a, a a family member, um, we just have to see the money coming from um, the donor to your account, right? So I would say this, mattress money is a big thing in our world. So yes, those of you guys don't know who ma- what mattress money is, is basically you have some cash under your mattress, right? Um, New York, we do susus a lot up here, right? Yep. That's, all, that's all mattress money. So you'll have a lot of people that would just want to deposit that money and say, hey, I'm going to use this to buy the house. 
So if that, that money is undocumented, we can't use it, right? So then that's when you probably have to go get a gift from your mom, your dad, or someone like that, your brother, your sister. We have to see that they have the money. So we're going to require one month of their bank statements to show that they had that money sitting in their bank account already. And then we have to see the money coming from their account into your account. And then you sign a gift letter and that's that. Right. But you can't try to be slick. You can't say, hey, I just got the susu for 30K. Let me give it to my sister. She deposits it and then gives me a gift. We're going to see that large deposit and we're going to see. So now we can't use it. Right. But gifts are, are more than welcome when you're doing a primary residence. Got you. Can you talk to me? What you know? I know you run with with with, with Envy and Caesar and and, and all of the, the the guys who are really educating our community. They speak mm -hmm. so much about hard money lenders. Yes. We, we, explain what what's a hard money lender? Because that sounds like some mob guy with 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 a sweatsuit on ready to break your kneecaps. What, what's well, a that, hard money lender? That's kind of how it was like 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> 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 but yeah, yo, shout out to Envy and Caesar. Um. You know, they're definitely doing a great thing, man. Those are my brothers right there. But hard money lenders is basically private lenders. And um, and they use a lot of hard money lenders for the deals that they buy. Um, and that's basically when you're buying in your LLC, right? You're buying in the LLC's name. You want to do a fix and flip home. You buy a home at an auction. You fix it up. The hard money lender will give you probably 90 to 80% of the acquisition price. So if the price is, let's just say $100,000, if they're want, if they going to give you 80% of that 100, that means you basically have to put down 20%, right? And then they'll give you 100% of the rehab money to fix up that house. Now with a hard money loan, Sean, that hard money loan is only good for 12 months. After 12 months, it's a balloon payment due. You have to pay it off in full. So if you're going to take out a hard money, you have to make sure that A, you have an exit strategy. An exit strategy is, is that you're able to either A, sell that property to an end buyer to flip it, or B, have a, a, a asset-based lender that will still, that will refinance you out of the hard money loan. Okay, you just educated me on this one because I didn't know that. I want you to okay. stick to this for one second. Yeah, yeah. A hard money lender will lend you typically up to 80% Correct. of what the home costs. Correct. I'm assuming it's at a much higher interest rate. Interest rates can be right now. So let's speak on COVID-19, right? Yep. COVID-19, the hard money world, it took a, a, a beating, right? So if you are a new investor, you're going to probably have to put down 30% right now because you, you have no experience. For seasoned guys, they can get anywhere from 15 to 20% down. So the Indies and the Caesar of the world right now, they'll do 15, 20% down on their deals. Prior to COVID, they were doing 10% down uh, on their deals. Now, with that hard money lender, they're going to charge you interest rates anywhere from 11 to 15%, depending on the hard money lender. And they're also going to charge you points. Um, a point is 1% of your loan amount. So if they charge you three points, they're going to charge, that's $3,000 if you're doing a $100,000 loan that they're going to charge you as their origination fee, right? So it can get very expensive. You know, if you're doing a million dollar house, that can be, you know, $30,000 that you just have to pay that hard money lender. But it's a tool, Sean. It's a tool. It's a short term solution. It gives the investor the ability to go out there to buy distressed properties, to rehab those dist distressed properties and to flip them for a property, but also creating um, housing um, in, in certain neighborhoods, right? Mm -hmm. It's a great tool to use. I don't really harp too much on the interest rate too much because it's a short-term solution because you're not looking to pay 12% for 30 years. It's just, it's just for that short term of one year. So this is for somebody who is looking to flip, basically, because after Absolutely. 12 months, they want their money. Absolutely. It's mainly for people who want to flip, but you can also use it as a way to buy and hold property too. So if you buy a multifamily from an auction and it's, let's say you buy a band though, it's burnt out, right? Mm -hmm. You need the money to rehab that, but you know you want to keep it for the long term of the rental income because the cash flow is there. 
So you'll get the hard money loan is perfect for that. So it'll give you the funds to acquire the property, rehab it, and then you refinance out of the hard money loan into something that's going to be um, fixed for a longer period of time, maybe five years, seven years, or 30 years, depending on what type of loan you're going to do. Um, so the hard money tool can be used for uh, uh, like a short term, like real short term, three to six months, and then you refinance out of there and get into something else. So it's a great tool to use for investors. I mean, that's how Envy and Caesar have built up their portfolio. I think yep. Caesar's well over 1,100 units right now. Envy is close to 200. Um, and they've used these strategies that I'm talking about right now to build that up in a short period of time. Got you. Um, how would I, you know, I guess, but even before I get off that hard money lender, mm -hmm. does a hard money lender, do they go through the same protocol as a traditional loan officer, meaning checking credit, nope. word of mouth? Like, what are the qualifications there? So typically the requirements for a hard money lender, they want you to personally have, um, it used to be 620 score, but it rose to around 640 to 660, depending on the hard money lender um, during this quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, but typically 640 to 660 credit score, they're going to look at your personal credit just to make sure that you're not a deadbeat. You know what I'm saying? Because they're lending an LLC and they know people who have LLCs, you can walk away from that. So you personally, you're going to personally guarantee that money, just in case you try to walk away, they can come after you, but it won't appear on your personal credit. But with hard money loans, Sean, it's not like the traditional route when we need your blood type, your W-2s, your firstborn. With a hard money loan, if you have the money and your credit is there, it's an easy process. You can get closed in two weeks, 10 days. Really? You know, it's not, it's not they're, not, they're not looking for those W-2s, those tax returns, those pay stubs. They don't care if you're unemployed. They don't care if you have a job. They just want to make sure your credit is where it needs to be. And what's your level of experience is the most important criteria that they're looking at. Is your experience. Are you a rookie or are you seasoned? And if you are seasoned, where is your HUDs? Where is your settlement statements? Show proof of the transactions that you completed over the last couple of years. And that will ultimately determine your interest rates and how much you're going to have to come out of pocket with to get the loan. Now, as you build that relationship with the hard money, and this is what I would highly recommend to everybody watching this, if they want to um, invest, build relationships with hard money lenders. The more deals you're doing with them, the more competitive they're going to come. As they see they're lending you money, you're paying them off, it's like anything. You got a credit card, right? You may start off with a high balance of 1000 You use it, pay it off, use it, pay it off. What are they going to do? Hey, congratulations, here's 10000 now, right? You've been responsible. It's the same thing with private money lenders. And once you have those private money lenders that know that you are going to do what you say you're going to do and you execute, the world is yours as an investor from there. You can take over. So question for you. My last question in terms of, uh, of the hard money lender. I know where to find you in traditional loan offices. Mm -hmm. Where do you even find these guys? Like, <laughs> do they have offices? Is it back alley somewhere? Like, are, 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 are they on? Can you just... Go into Google and punch in hard money listing and, and a list of them come up? Absolutely. I mean, look, 15, 18 years ago, back alleys, right? All day. Now, Google's your best friend. You can Google your life away, hard money lender, in whatever county, town, city you're in, and you'll see a whole bunch of things come up. You can go to Instagram. You can go to Facebook. You can go to YouTube, hard money lender. You can hashtag search, Right. And you'll see a bunch of things out there. There's so many investors that are, are open with the knowledge of, uh, that they're sharing right now on all these platforms where, hey, you can just go on somebody's comments. Who's your hard money lender? You'll be surprised. They'll tell you, hey, this is who I use. Go work with them. And then you go to their page and you check out what they do and set up a consultation and, and, and have that conversation. But I will tell you, before you start having these conversations, be prepared right? These folks are busy professionals, just like myself. The worst thing you can do for yourself is go into a conversation unprepared, having no knowledge, because they're not going to take you serious. Like when folks come to me and tell me they want to buy a home if they're a first-time home buyer, if they, have, if they don't understand certain lingo, I don't expect you to be an expert, but have a general idea, that's going to show me that you're serious about buying a home. But if you're trying to treat me like I'm your personal Google, I'm turned off. Because it's like, 
The information is here at your fingertips. It's right here on your phone now, right? And like, it's impossible for you not to Google something and, and learn about it and, and have some basic terminology so that way you can have an intelligent conversation. So I would highly recommend go to YouTube, go to, go to Instagram, go to these platforms, learn a little bit so that way you can have that intelligent conversation. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.